Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury, I'm JRH and today I'm looking at the BAM DB4 Air Rifle. Before I start, I should just put in the caveat that I think this is the DB4. Um, the model isn't marked on it anywhere, and there are a number of similar guns, namely the DB3, DB4 and DB5. Um, and as a Chinese-made gun that's sold under a number of different names in different countries, it's very hard to find any definitive information about it. So I'm working on the assumption that it is the DB4, but if you think otherwise, let me know in the comments below. So this gun is made by BAM, or BAM, which stands for Best Air Gun Manufacturer, which is a trademark of air guns made by the Jiangsu Xinju Machinery Manufacturing Company in Jiangsu Province in China. The guns are imported and distributed by different companies in different countries, uh, some of which do actually have their name branded on the guns. Now in the UK they're imported by SMK, or Sports Marketing, and it's known as the SMK DB4. And in the US, I believe they're imported by Sysico, and they may even have a different model designation there as well. Now, I'm not sure when the uh, DB4 was made, uh, but I don't think it's a current model, although the DB3 and DB5 are, but it's certainly not an old gun. Uh, I did read the possibility that this went out of production in 2009, and um, whilst I don't know, that does sound about right. So, let's take a closer look at the BAM, or SMK, DB4 air rifle. The DB4 is a spring piston under lever rifle, which you load directly into the breech under this cover. And that allows for great accuracy as it has a fixed barrel and you don't need to try and line up a rotating loading tap as on some under levers. And then the under lever is just held in place with a basic metal clip under the barrel. Now it's 41 inches or 104 centimetres long with a 17 and a half inch or 45 centimetre rifled barrel and it weighs 6.4 pounds or 2.9 kilograms. Now this particular example is in 2.2 calibre but it was also available in both uh, 177 and 2.2. So it has a sporter style hardwood stock and it's a very nice big thick chunky stock um, with a squared off end has a raised cheek piece on the right hand side and that does make it a right-handed gun but the cheek piece isn't so prominent that a left-handed shooter would have any problems with it. Uh, the stock is actually very nicely finished compared to some budget Chinese guns and features some nicely shaped checkering on the forend and the grip although that checkering is pretty much just for look as it's very smooth and doesn't add any grip whatsoever. Then with regard to hardware, it's finished off with a rubber butt pad, a steel trigger guard and a plastic end cap. In terms of quality, there's not too much plastic on it, which I like. Just the end cap, cap on the end of the under lever and the trigger blade. Now the metal work is finished okay and the stock is quite good. It looks nice, but looks can be deceiving. Now whilst the bits you can see look nice, uh, if I take the stock off and look under the bonnet, as it were, you'll see that this is actually a quite poor quality gun. With the stock off, if I turn the gun over, you can see that the metalwork is very badly finished in terms of bad welds and grind marks everywhere. Uh, the main cylinder isn't welded all the way along the join, and the cocking under lever is just stamped and again not welded along the join. If I turn it back over and open the breech again you can probably see marks on the bottom of the cylinder there where parts scrape against each other because they're not a great fit and you can probably also see some oil and grease in there which causes this gun to diesel. With the stock off we can also get a good look at the trigger. Now, the DB4 has a single stage non-adjustable trigger and it's quite a heavy trigger pull 
and as I said earlier it's just a plastic trigger blade. Now the rifle doesn't have a safety either manual or automatic but it does have a safety feature of sorts to stop the trigger being pulled um, whilst the gun's being loaded. So how that works is when the underlever comes down and the cocking link here moves backwards this metal plate uh, is then released and pulled back under spring pressure from these springs and then this bar here which is connected to that moves backwards which blocks the trigger because it comes and covers this surface here so it just stops you pulling the trigger whilst your fingers are still likely to be inside the gun. Um, whilst that is a good feature it's unfortunately not a true anti-bear trap safety uh, this gun doesn't have an additional catch to hold the sliding breech and piston back in case the sear fails um, this just stops the trigger being pulled. Looking at the sights the rear sight on the DB4 is adjustable for windage and elevation but I can't tell you a lot more about it than that as I don't actually have it as you can see it's missing from this gun. Uh, it should be towards the back of the main cylinder and clamps onto the uh, rail for the scope. Now that's a relatively uncommon fixing method for an open sight. Uh, most just screw into the top of the main cylinder or the back of the barrel. Uh, I quite like that method though as it doesn't leave any holes in the top of the gun if you remove the open sights and it allows you to alter the position on the gun by moving it back and forwards. Uh, downsides are however though that without any kind of recoil stop screw or arrestor block it's possible that the sight could move over time due to recoil and there's obviously the potential for it to get lost as is the case here. Now the front sight is a metal post which is threaded so it can be um, turned in or out presumably to adjust for the elevation. It then has a nice metal sight hood with a cutout in the top presumably to adjust the post easier and also let light in. Uh, I believe the front sight is removable um, but it would probably take quite a bit of force to get it off as I think it's press fit on although I don't know how good the end of the barrel would look if you took it off as the barrel is turned down and textured to hold that sight on. Uh, I really like the front sight, but obviously I can't really comment on the rear sight or the overall sight picture. Now if you don't want to use the open sights, as I mentioned earlier, it does have a scope rail and it's just a standard 11mm dovetail. Now looking at the markings, or marking to be more precise as there is only one, is it says BAM or BAM on the top of the main cylinder. Uh, the model number, as I said earlier, isn't marked anywhere on it and they aren't serial numbered. I'm going to do a bit of testing with the DB4 uh, but I'm not going to test the accuracy uh, because of that missing rear sight. Now I know I could mount a scope and test it that way but I generally like to do my accuracy test with open sights to eliminate the variable of the quality of the scope and also that way it's more of a test of the gun itself um, plus I don't actually have a spare scope to mount on it at the moment so instead I'm going to go straight to testing the power. I'm going to put 10 of these 14.3 grain BSA pylon number 2 pellets uh, over the chronograph. Here I have my chronograph test sheet and I've already done all of my calculations. Now with those 14.3 grain BSA pylon number 2 pellets I got an average velocity of 462.18 feet per second with a spread of 50.4 feet per second, uh, the highest being 479.8 feet per second and the lowest being 429.4 feet per second and using that average of 462.18 feet per second that gives me a power of 6.78 foot pounds. Now when these guns were new they were supposed to get up to around 500 feet per second in 2.2 and 700 feet per second in 177. Now whilst this is a bit below that it's not significantly so and this is a used gun plus I don't know what pellets were being used to get that 500 feet per second. 
uh, they might have been a bit lighter than the ones I was using. Uh, the spread was slightly higher than I was expecting or hoped for though. So there you've seen the BAM or SMK DB4 air rifle. Now I'm conflicted in my opinion of this gun really. Uh, on the one hand I'd say it feels very cheap with poor quality parts and workmanship and lacking the safety features I'd want. But on the other hand it does look like quite a nice gun. Uh, the stock and the sights aren't bad, it's quite comfortable to hold and it's actually not too unpleasant to shoot. Now when with these were new the RRP was only 70 or 80 pounds. Um, and it's obviously even cheaper than that to buy a second hand one these days. So I think looking at the gun purely on its own merits, it's not a particularly good gun, but looking at it within the context of its price, it is a good gun for the money. So thanks for watching, hope you found the video interesting. If so, be sure to like, comment and subscribe to the Air Armoury. And until next time, keep your arms in the air.